Suffering isn't a punishment from God, but a rare opportunity to show how awesome He is connecting people to God and each other. Those words were spoken by a young man who was facing death at just 19 with leukemia. Ben Elliott's family embraced what they call the Ben attitude, and they have turned their grief and loss into hope for others. Six years after the passing of a son and brother, they invite us into their ongoing grief journey in Dancing in the Rain, written by mom, Lisa Elliott. Lisa, welcome back. Thank you. Six years later, The Ben Ripple, an award-winning <laughs> book, by the way, uh, continues after Ben's passing, August 19th, 2009. And really, uh, he set the course for um, what you are obediently are doing, dancing in the rain. Um, comes from a quote. Yes, a quote that we came across that year uh, that Ben was sick, that life is not about waiting for the storm to pass, it's learning to dance in the rain. And Ben, uh, I don't even think he realized at the time what he was teaching us as a family. Each family member was taking such note of, uh, of the way that Ben attitude that he was leading the way step by step. And, and as you said, it's six years later and uh, a grieving friend of mine who lost a son about 14 years ago would say, I'm six years fresh into my grief. Um, last year or last week was uh, well it was June his, 30th uh, June 30th yeah um, was his would have been 25th birthday and uh, it's still to this day hard to know how to handle those steps you know uh, the, the weather that day was just very unpredictable we didn't know if it was gonna rain or shine or what and uh, and four of us gathered. My daughter, Natalie, is out in Winnipeg now, but the, the rest of us gathered in our home and just didn't know what to do with ourselves six years later. And uh, it's a day that we should be celebrating a life that was lived and lived well. Um, but in his death, we, we just don't know how to deal with that death and his life and it, it's just a kind of a weird beast and I remember at, at the end of the the day my husband and I I just couldn't sit and stare at one more wall and I said we just got to get out of here just take me for a drive we ended up driving and having to literally pull out a map to discover where we had ended up we had no idea where we were but I just said just drive just drive and so we did and uh, as we drove, I just lost it. I, I just couldn't contain the tears any longer and I just started crying. And uh, just at that moment, as has happened many times over the last six years, even the year that Ben was sick, it was a rainy, rainy year that year, uh, abnormally rainy. And just as I was crying just, just on his birthday, I looked out and it started raining. It just started raining and my husband looked at me and he said, Lisa, Jesus is crying with you again. And I looked to my right out my passenger window and there was this beautiful cloudy kind of distorted sunset going on. It was just beautiful. So I took a picture of that and then I turned around to look at my husband's driver's seat window and there was a full out rainbow. I knew you'd say that. There I knew this would end with rainbow. a rainbow. And this book began, you started writing it in the rain. Yeah. You finished it in yeah. the rain. I, raindrops keep falling on my bed. <laughs> That's right. It was, was huge when you were growing up. Yeah, it was. And Ben's song, I'll Praise You, in this storm, yeah. casting crowns. Yeah. Uh, there's a rain theme, there's an overcoming theme, yes. there's a visible physical reminder in Stratford, Ontario yes. today. Yep. We have a picture of a memorial bench. Yes. Bench. <laughs> well for, said. For Ben. <laughs> and yeah. these are his words yeah. Promise me you'll honestly have fun in what you do. Yeah. That was actually uh, a little insert into a CD that he had left us as a family uh, in knowing that he was dying. He was planning his own funeral and he started downloading songs from his computer and he called this disc Seven Important Songs, Ben's Seven Important Songs. And uh, there's so much to say about that, but smack dab in the middle of that is this song called Have Fun in Life, Make It All Worthwhile, Maybe Even Crack a Smile, mm -hmm. but Stop and Smell the Roses While They're in Bloom, and Promise Me, Mom and Dad, You'll Honestly Have Fun in What You Do. And so we're trying. Mm -hmm. We are trying. We have a picture of, of Ben, and I don't yeah. want you to be fooled here. This is tied to the bench. Yes. Um, this is not his hair. This is actually that during that long 
that terrible year. year. Well, where the bench is actually seated in Stratford is outside a, a, a toy store that he worked at called Family and Company, and the staff there actually pitched in and bought him a bunch of fake hair, one of them being this wig attached to this cap. And so I told him to put it on. We took a picture actually on our way to the Casting Crowns concert that we were attending that night. Cool. And I said, put it on, Ben. I said, this is the closest we'll ever come to looking like each other. Mm -hmm. So This book has um, dance steps and and Ben clearly is the original dance instructor yeah. behind this book and uh, he uh, was not a dancer by the way so uh, that's what makes it even funnier even more but, yeah. and splashes joy splashes yeah. which are the scriptures yeah and uh, it, it's just a powerful encouragement all the way through you've been a pastor's wife David is here today for over 30 years uh, anyone in church ministry knows it's a bit of a fishbowl. Yeah. This is not a performance. No. This is not about doing the right thing yeah. that others might see me being what is expected. The vulnerability here is huge. You talk about there being no escape from denial and regret. Uh, the numbing reality where you can't think you just do. You've had those chapters, yeah. Lisa. Yeah, and the funny thing with grief is that everyone deals with it differently. And one thing that I really want to convey in the book, Dancing in the Rain, is the fact that all five of us in our family were dealing with the same loss. We were all dealing with the death of Ben. Uh, but to me, he was my son. To my husband, he was his son. Uh, but to each of his siblings, they all shared a different relationship to Ben. So it all came through different faces uh, and phases in our grief. And they um, all contribute in the book. It, and that's the Which exciting thing wonderful. for me. It's, you know, in, in the Ben Ripple, that was very much a bedside book. You know, I wrote that to a blog of Facebook followers at Ben's bedside. Uh, Dancing in the Rain it came out of the fact that I just couldn't believe what I was seeing as they were all... Um, dealing with their grief, dealing with their loss. And I was just amazed because I needed to know how to do it myself. And watching my family members was so inspirational, but I, I had to keep that to myself because they were on their own journeys. Mm -hmm. So I really felt it was important that they put into their words what their grief was like and the journeys, I mean, I, you, you think that when you deal with one crisis, that that will be it. You know, okay, Lord, I'm done. You know, we're, we're all good here. Okay, next. We can just move on. We're our happy, merry little way. And, and then life happens again and again. There's all kinds of storms we let, face. Let me see some of uh, Aaron's, Aaron's comments because she confesses <laughs> oh anger yeah. toward God yeah. when yeah. after Ben's death, you face this tremendous challenge with Jacob and a boat accident. Yeah. Uh, and that just seemed to be the beginning of a domino of crises. It was. Like enough already. It, it was. It, it triggered a lot um, in each one of us. It was, oh, after the accident occurred, I, I remember my husband and I lying in bed saying, is this really happening again? You know, is, could this really be happening again? Why us? How us? What do we do now? And uh, it was unreal. You know, you, you kind of say, Lord, it, is this not enough? Have we not had enough? But obviously not. And life goes on. And Aaron, who was how old at the time? Uh, of the accident? Of the boating uh, accident. Of the boating accident. That was uh, only a three years ago. So, 17? <laughs> 17. 17. You know what her dance step is? Learn to listen to the still small voice That's of God. Right. That's the, right. the young woman who was angry at God and probably overwhelmed with grief and, and distress. And change. I mean, at that time we were also moving. We were making a huge ministry transition. We were moving cities, locations. We actually moved to the city where Ben was treated. Uh, so that stirred up a whole other element of our grief and having to step into our grief. Uh, you know, like I talk about in the book, there's these dance steps and it literally is a step by step walk through our grief and facing storms in our life rather than running away and that's one thing that, that, yeah, I saw Aaron learning to do so well, it was to just listen to that still small voice, lean into God's heartbeat. And, and it's no wonder you took a stress test with a score of 105. I don't know what normal is. Yeah, it was way out of normal. It was, it was not normal. All this stuff, mother-in-law yeah. passed away, you were moving your house. Well, actually, Natalie's wedding was six weeks after you after, had top after our of the move. stress scale move, yeah. but beautiful picture. Wait yeah. till you see the picture. Yeah. Here's the family at, uh, at Natalie and Josh's wedding. And um, can we tell? 
Yes. Some exciting news. Natalie and Josh are expecting our first grandchild. And of all 365 days in the year that God could have chosen to have this baby do, uh, whether or not it's born that day, we all know that that may or may not be, but the due date is August 19th, which would be the six year anniversary of Ben's death. And uh, you know, when, when Natalie, actually the, the weekend that my book was launched is when they announced that they were expecting. So it was this family day weekend, it was releasing a family, book endeavor and uh, and she told us the due date and and we all just kind of had a little meltdown moment of wow God you are a redeemer you are a redeemer there is life after death and that's the whole premise of this book that there I think I'm sitting here hopefully declaring to the world out there that there really is life after death beyond earth's gates and into heavens um, there is life to be lived here that Jesus calls us to live in abundance and it's not easy. It's not easy to have fun in life and to make it all worthwhile. It's, it's, it's not easy to wake up every morning and to choose life over death. It's just not easy. You have a theme verse for both chapters and I love this. I'm going to read your, your framer for dancing in the rain. It's Deuteronomy 30 verses 19 and 20. Yeah. This is God speaking. Today, I have given you the choice between life and death, blessings and cursings. Mm -hmm. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. One version says, and to hold fast to him. And you know, when you face life and death situations, which we all do at some point in life on this planet, um, we're, we're forced almost into the arms of God where we have no choice but to hold fast to him because he is our life. Mm -hmm. And we learn that, we learn that the hard way. Well, you talk about clearing out things cluttering your spiritual house there is so much to learn you don't even have to be going through a crisis to have a faith lift as you read dancing in the rain one family's journey through grief and loss and you know you can keep in touch with lisa yep. uh, your blog straight from the heart and you are a regular writer with just between us a magazine jill briscoe started just for pastors wives that's right that's got to be your next book Maybe, maybe it will. <laughs> oh, Lisa, it is a joy to know your family. You. It is uh, an ongoing inspiration to walk with you as you grow in that rain. Rain makes things grow. You That's make right. the point. Right. And uh, thank you so much for choosing life and sharing your lives with us. Will you hug your family for us? Too? I will do that, every single one of them. Thank you so much for allowing me the privilege of sharing that hope. And... Uh, Jesus, bring the rain. <laughs>